Welcome back to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Time for us to check out the front pages of our national dailies. We call it, uh, we call it Off the Press. And as usual, we will have uh, Chris Wandu joining us to make sense of all of the headlines. I will start off with the Daily Independent newspaper this morning. Let's check out the Daily Independent. The banner caption reads, Don't endanger your political future. APC Governors won Attorney General of the Federation. Uh, talking about the Electoral Act Amendment Bill. Don't endanger your political future. APC Governors won AGF. To meet Buhari over direct primaries. Uh, all of that saga. Uh, you have Patty Hall's National Convention, February 2022. Uh, quite interesting. Away from the board headline, you also have we expect Buhari to ascend to Electoral Act Amendment Bill. Uh, Lawan is quoted on that. Uh, says NAS may pass 2022 budget before Christmas. Northern Coalition once again release of Namdi Kanu. And uh, another report says scores feared dead as fire raises boat at Potaka Jetty. Flower Mills acquires Honeywell Flower Mills. Uh, another interesting caption you find this morning. And you also have West African Examination Council releases 2021 senior secondary certificate examination result, increases exam fee by 25%. That's also another uh, caption you find on the Daily Independent. Now, see, looking at it just before we move away, insurers risk sanction for violating daily transactions upload that battle amid aim i take that again that battle aimed at strengthening rule of law uh, that's also on the daily independent newspaper that's the much we can take at this point in time all right away from the daily independent uh, our next uh, poll of call is the leadership of newspaper making headlines and this morning attacks on abuja kaduna road a national shame says ACF. With some writers there, a bandits kill four in Katsina, 11 rescued in Kaduna, a bandit spiritual leader arrested in Niger, insurgents bandits fuel in poverty, a northern leaders, uh, that's according to P PMB, that's a president that is, a northern leaders lack courage to confront challenges, that's a, a coalition, above the masthead of a uh, uh, just below the masthead, rather. Exhibitors Hill Nexim Bank impact showing at Durban. Other stories making a front page of the leadership newspaper. We came to federal government consider oil theft as treason. Fire raises 41 shops at Camel Market. A veteran comic actor Babaswe passes on. Also making headlines uh, this morning, WAIC uh, raises SSC e-registration fee by 29%. APC to elect party officers in February convention. What's the rider? Booney denies uh, delaying Congress to extend a uh, tenure. Don't release Colonel Northern Youth, tell PMB. Those are the stories you can find on the front page of the leadership newspaper for this morning. Away from the leadership newspaper this morning, let's check out the punch on the front page of the punch newspaper. The banner caption reads, February 2022 APC convention date shaky. Crisis persists in 12 states. And uh, you find underneath the bold caption, governors proposed February to President Buhari for approval, says Bagudu. Uh, you also have uh, Rivers, Ekiti, Ogun, Oyo, Zamfara, Kwara, Cross River, others affected. Naira loses steam, slides to 555 Naira to a dollar in parallel market. Now, this is what you find. Uh, Godwin Amefali is quoted on that. 11,200 Nigerian women and children raped in 2020 according to a report by the United Nations. Capital inflow crashes by 80% and foreign investors shorn Nigerian market. You also, also have another caption saying, APC governors clash over direct primaries below Sule exchange words. 
Senate votes smuggled 16 billion naira vote into Environment uh, Ministry's border. That's also another interesting caption on uh, the Punch newspaper. Now, she'll sting with the punch. You have women better to drive peace process, says President uh, Mohammed Buhari. <laughs> you so just... you're smiling there, mercy. <laughs> you, you, the reason I'm smiling, it, it reminds me of you know when the president was addressing uh, the issue with Aisha Buhari. Mm. Uh, you know, she belongs to the other room. Uh, it's fine. All right, you also have threats. Treat oil theft as treason, military and police involved. Well, th this is some of the stories, but there are more interesting uh, headlines on the Punch newspaper this morning. That's much we can take at this point in time. And the final paper we will be reviewing this morning is the Nation uh, newspaper. The banner headline for this morning, why APC can't hold national convention now. Uh, are, uh, some writers there, a party to conclude congresses in four state. Buhari uh, governors uh, settle for February. Honeywell flood mills in 80 billion naira merger. Deal. Lagos and SARS panel report controversy uh, rages. On the red strip there, there is another story. Absence of interpreter forces court to put off Igboho's aids uh, arraignment. Above the masthead, there are some other interesting stories. Panel on Ikoyi building collapse at six memoranda. Nollywood veteran uh, Babasui dies at 63. Wiki is saying top military police officers are this involved in oil theft. Wyak lacks or jacks up exam fees to 18,000 naira, 81.7% credit recorded. And that's some um, good one. 16 billion naira hidden vote found in Environment Ministry's uh, budget. The last story there this morning on the red strip uh, below. On both varsity shut down indefinitely, Oyetola releases uh, 708 million naira for pensioners. Those are the stories you can find on the front page of the Nation newspaper this Tuesday morning. All right, uh, we just head straight to the crux of the matter this morning. We do have Chris Wandu. On standby. Good morning, Chris. Thank you once again for joining us. Good morning. Thank you very much for having me. And you guys are looking so smashy this morning. Yeah, thank thank you. you so much, Chris. Okay, so let's start off with the Daily Independent newspaper this morning. Uh, the bold caption on the Daily Independent says, Electoral Act Amendment Bill, don't endanger your political future or APC governors uh, warning the Attorney General of the Federation. Let's share your thoughts on that. Well, the governors, um, um, to me, I'm just playing to the gallery. Um, it is the duty um, of the National Assembly to uh, make laws or make laws for the federation, and uh, it is also uh, for the president to assent to such uh, laws uh, where necessary. It's not even where necessary; it's compulsory. Even with the constitution, is that the president is given a certain period within which to assent to. Uh, uh, a bill or a law passed by the National Assembly doesn't they have a right um, to just um, uh, uh, veto um, the president's uh, assignment or signature as it were. The electoral bill amended that we passed by both chambers of the National Assembly. Funny enough, those, those two chambers are made up of majority uh, members of the ruling APC. So, uh, it's not just a bill for APC, it's a bill for Nigeria, it's a bill for APC, APGA, PDP, and the rest of them. The legislators across party lines um, uh, passed that uh, bill. So uh, I don't know the problem that the governors have uh, with that bill. If the family, who are the true representatives of Nigerians, have um, passed that bill, 360 House of Representative members, 109 senators, um, then uh, the governors are on their own. Uh, but you can, it also shows the selfish nature of our leaders because it seems to be a bad between uh, legislators and uh, the governors. The governors feel that the powers have been taken off them and uh, to a large extent um, with the direct primaries, their hold on the parties um, is shaky because they have done little in the past within direct primaries is to handpick the people of their choice. 
we have been in, 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 in instances where senators, members of House of Representatives, and so many other political uh, officers don't find their way back to a position, especially within the National Assembly, because they have an issue to be assimilated with their governors. So what they just do, they just call people their A's, and just have people who is going to go to the Senate, who is going to go to the National um, House of Representatives, the State House of Representatives, and the rest of them. They making it, if you watch what has been happening within our National Assembly since 1999, we have a very high turnover of legislators. That is not what is obtainable uh, in other parts of the world. If you see in the, in the US, there are still some uh, legislators that have been in those houses for over 50 years. You know why? Because the more they come back, the more uh, equipped they are. They, 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 they've harnessed the the, 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 you know, the intricacies that goes with legislative uh, matters. But our senators, our governors will not allow it. Let me just give you a classic example before we move to the next story. You remember what happened in uh, just uh, in 2019? One of the best, I would say, the best senators in the Senate, Senator uh, Sani, was refused um, the opportunity of coming back to this by the governor of Cardinal State because he has an issue, because of issues he raised on the floors of the uh, Senate concerning the uh, uh, um, uh, governor Eropa attempt to obtain some loose. And because of that, that cost him. See. So, uh, but as I said, they are talking, they are telling the AGF not to jeopardize his uh, political picture. What they are trying to say is that the AGF should advise the president not to sign that bill. It is not a bill of, of, for the APC, it is Nigerian bill. And if the legislators who are the rightful people that make laws for Nigeria pass that, then all well and good, so, so shall it be. All right, um, Chris, I want to, another story that is, uh, you know, trending and making headlines across um, several papers is the attack on the uh, passengers along the Abuja Kaduna Road. A leadership caption that this way attacks on Abuja Kaduna Road a national shame, says uh, Arawa Consultative uh, Forum. What are your thoughts uh, concerning that? Because Messi and I indeed were discussing uh, this just a few minutes ago, and we felt that uh, this issue of security is just continuing unabated. And as though the federal government knows what to do, but they're not seemingly doing what they should do. How do you react? It's not a, only a monumental uh, shame. It's, 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 it's a shame of the highest order. Um, let, let's put it in, in proper perspective. Um, a, a gubernatorial candidate, uh, a former gubernatorial candidate of the APC in Zabra State was killed was in that killed. attack. Yes, he was. Good. Now, also, we are just relearning that what a nursing mother was also kidnapped and her baby was thrown inside the bush. They threw away the baby inside the bush and went away the mother. So that is the level at which we have degenerated in this country. And when you see people, people say, oh, I will, you just you ask yourself, where is humanity in all this? And when the international communities look at some of these things, I read some of these things, what do they, what, what do they think about us? So the problem is that, especially the Haduna Abuja has consistently been a, a hotspot of kidnapping, banditry, killing, and the rest of them, which is why most people now prefer the rail going mm -hmm. through Abuja to um, uh, uh, to Kaduna. But even that one is no longer safe. Remember, just few, a few weeks ago, that attack. train was also attacked. Yes, in October. So, good. So, what are we talking about? So, it is it is a big indictment on our security agencies and also our leaders. And what I feel at a point. They were able to pinpoint some of these things to a particular. But now it's a free fall. You cannot, and when somebody come up to tell us, oh, we are now much safer than we were in 2015, and some of us just continue to laugh because they are not even facing the realities. When you start giving instances of uh, trying to measure what happened in 2015, are you saying that we are more better and safer now? And you know the, bad, the, 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 the terrible aspect of it. All these things, insecurity is tied down to economy. Your economy cannot grow. You can't have an economic growth when you are living in a state of insecurity. The president is flying every day, going to Paris, going to Glasgow, going to South Africa, trying to attract investors to Nigeria. Which company, which organization want to invest in a country where he knows that there's no insecurity? And that is the paradox for me. So a situation where it is very... And Kaduna, uh, Abuja, is getting closer home because you cannot say that. They have stood there. The University of Abuja was attacked recently, and lecturers were kidnapped mm. and abducted from the University of Abuja. 
that is in the city center. We even within the Gadolia said NDA was attacked. A top military officer was killed. That is NDA, military formation. So what are we talking about? So the situation as it were. I think the president should, I don't know what we need to do again. We have just service this. We thought that going to help the situation. It doesn't seem to help. What we need to do, I, need to, I, I still need to emphasize that. What we are lacking is what I call the intelligence factor. We are doing, doing more good, putting soldiers on the ground, policemen. But our security agencies to do more of intelligence gathering. That is where countries win battles against terrorists and bandits. Okay, let, let's move away from that now and look at the Punch newspaper uh, where the Naira uh, seemed to have lost its steam and it slides to 555 Naira to a dollar in the parallel market. Let's show you your thoughts on that. You said you lost its steam. Did you ever gather any steam before? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Now. <laughs> let's not let's stop deceiving ourselves. He lost his team. Uh, if, uh, what's, uh, we're not deceiving ourselves. <laughs> it, it has been a free fall. Irrespective of don't forget that Central Bank at a point uh, uh, accusing a particular online platform of being the reason why the Naira was falling. And that platform was um, <laughs> decided to just withdraw its activities and the rest of them. And the problem we have is there are two. Our monetary policies, we are not getting it right. And secondly, our overall independence on foreign and made good. As we continue to import, we will continue to deplete our, uh, our assets, especially when it comes to foreign currencies. And there's nothing you can do about it. Until we continue to produce more and export more, that is where we make everything. And even at that, if you look at it also, when you come look at direct investment for Nigerians and those in diaspora, before they used to remit so much back home, that is no longer happening. So we are finding ourselves in a situation where that we cannot determine um, uh, 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 we cannot determine the prices or whatever of dollars. We can't. Now, the central bank at a point closed down some bureaus, uh, church, uh, churches that say that they are part of the problem. But has that solved the problem? It has not solved the problem. So, if we say we push it, just like MBS coming out a few days ago and say, oh, uh, we are, we, the indices is showing that Nigeria is improving economically and the rest of them. And that does not, <laughs> if you go to the market, it doesn't change the price of tomatoes it has not changed the prices of um, of uh, beans it has not changed the prices of um, rice and the rest of them commodities are still on the rise and that is what we find ourselves that is what is happening now so anybody coming to tell me oh uh go to the parallel market go and try to buy a dollar what you have even seen on the papers is not even the right because if you go to get this dollar now is far 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 more than we are we are talking about looking at the parallel market and the rest of them the issue as a, as far as concern is that we need to find a way of trying to boost our economy so that we can be able to export more. And we are just a, a, a import driven country, no matter what. And the prices of uh, um, crude is dwindling on a daily basis. And that to me is, a, is an issue where you depend, depend solely on a, a commodity, which is, a, which is a crude oil. We are going to be faced with a shortfall in prices of, uh, of this product at any given point in time. We have said in time with that number that we should diversify economy. Let us look at agriculture. Let us look at areas of mining and the rest of them. That is a, a very huge um, a, a, a places we can invest. We are not even talking of tourism. That brings us back to security. Nobody, most countries depend, look at Kenya for instance, South Africa. They depend mostly on tourism. The same thing with Dubai. But here, nobody's coming here. How will you come to a country where, it's, where you know that after you move out of your hotel, somebody is going to either they kill you inside the hotel or you move out and somebody kidnap you and start asking for ransom? This is just a big shame, my dear brother and sister. All right. Uh, another story that um, caught my attention this morning is that uh, education, uh, actually, uh, WAEC uh, raises SSCE registration uh, fee by 29%. Uh, uh, Chris, I just want you to talk concerning that, and because in my opinion, I don't know if uh, it's the right thing we should be doing or the thing we should be doing right now, because most people are actually complaining about not being able to uh, have their ends met. And now we are talking about uh, increasing uh, the cost of um, writing exams for our children. There are two legs to that story. The first is the fact that uh, we had a high record of uh, success. And that's true. Um, this time around. Yes. yes. So I think we have, um, from what I read, about 81%. 81% success credits. Yes. 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 Uh, with number of um, students um, having credits. That to me is credible. And very, that very is, uh, credible. It's a very, yes, it's a very good one. 
um, then um, about uh, prices, um, increase in price. Well, I wouldn't blame uh, why across board we are having, we see what is, and that is what I'm talking about, commodity prices and rest of But in other climes, education is key, is primary to other. Let me tell you for free that in United Kingdom, school children, especially those in the primary school, they go to school free. It's free. Those, those things are free. You don't need to pay for them. It happens in the United Kingdom. I'm talking of presently now. And the same thing happens in the in, in US and most developed countries. We are paying this service to education in Nigeria. And got to take it, even the United Nations has a, 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 a what, what, what would I like put now, a ceiling as to the budget, what you have to budget for education, just like health, every year. Are we meeting that? Most of our leaders that we have now, most of the leaders that we have, they went to primary and secondary school free. I will tell you that for free. Most of them did. I remember how, what happened during the, um, between 1979 to about 83 or there about, during the Second Republic. In Lagos State, primary and secondary school were free. I attended from my primary to secondary school, even to my university level, and I attended Lagos State University. I never, my parents never paid a dime. I left the university in 1990, and I'm telling you this, this was happened um, in the Second Republic. And what am I saying in essence? Which is why we were able to, most people that, most parents that could not afford to send to their, their children to school had the opportunity. Most of those people that you see now as a leader, either the National Assembly or ministers, and their parents could not, we were not able to afford the school. Don't forget what our uh, former president said. When he said he had no shoe, they have been forgotten that and said that he had no shoe. And he rose up to become the president. Somebody that didn't have been issue. Do you think the parents were able to pay school fees? That means they went for government grants and it's so. It is is quite unfortunate. Um, I personally would not blame Waye for it. They, I'm sure they had overhead costs is they're putting into consideration. But education should not be seen. This is where we take, I think that personally, the federal government should come clean on this and be able to subsidize, uh, subsidize um, this uh, fees. I know that Lagos State is doing something along that line. I don't know whether they are still doing it because at a point, the Lagos State government, right from the time of Ampo or Zee Fashion Lab, used to, for students in public school in Lagos State, they were paying their um, wire, um, um, WASC, and uh, what's the other one, um, school fees, free, they are paying free. I don't know whether they still do that now, but they're notwithstanding. What I think we need to do is that encourage as many children to go to school, and government should try as possible to subsidize the prices of this, school, um, this um, examination uh, fees, because without that, that means that most of them cannot even get admission into the university. Okay, uh, Chris Wandu, let's talk about the ruling uh, party, that's the APC, and the fact that, you know, crisis is still brewing in that particular party. Twelve states has been mentioned in uh, the Punch newspaper this morning, and you also have that uh, the date for the convention, the national convention, is still not very certain, looking at February 2022, as against, uh, you know, December. Let's share your thoughts on that. Well... To me, the PDP seems to be the forerunner as far as issue of um, this uh, party crisis uh, is concerned. PDP seems to have gotten its act together. And you saw the, uh, the national convention where they had uh, some weeks back where they elected um, their national officers and um, they seem to be moving on. Um, what we're now looking forward is how they are going to soon uh, the presidency, whether it's going to be to the north or to the south. Actually, just we had the problem I come for PDP. But for APC, is from one, one problem to another. They are moving from one crisis to another. The various local governments, state, um, state um, uh, congresses that they had, you had in all, practically all the states, you had fashions. The one that bothered me most is that even in Lagos, there were fashions, there were two um, congresses that were held in Lagos. And at the end of it, now this crisis is still on. Now you look at a state like Zampara, you see in Zampara they have three fashions. The Marafa fashion, the current governor's fashion, another fashion. Uh, 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 that. Then you also talk about crossover states. The governor just uh, ported, as we say, from PDP to um, APC. They're having problem. That's Professor Ayadi. And some other states, River State practically lost, APC practically lost um, the election in 2019 in River State because of internal uh, crisis. The same thing happened in so many other, uh, other states, especially like Zampara too. And you also have the issue, the issue that happened in Bayesa State, where a governor was almost elected under the platform APC, only for the court to just, we just within 24 hours before his inauguration, 
because um, handed over to. So I, I, I hope and I believe that the APC will be able to get their house. Back. But I will tell you for free that this is all about 2023. The crisis you are seeing within APC now is towards 2023. You know why? Buhari, who is their central figure, who rallies everybody around, will not be on the ballot come 2023. So APC is going to find it difficult to be able to pick up somebody oh. who will be in the central post with Buhari and be able to galvanize Nigeria to be able to elect a credible uh, president from that political zone. So it's the soul of the party they are running for presently, and I hope they get their ass together. Uh, finally, uh, Chris, before we let you go, uh, the major business headline yesterday, aside from the MPC meeting, uh, was um, Honeywell uh, Flower Mills uh, in an um, 80 billion naira merger deal. Are there better uh, days ahead? Better, ahead are, uh, better days ahead, but that in itself also has its challenges because okay. if I just have a monopolistic uh, economy, we are one company we just decide the prices of um, uh, of such uh, services. For goodness, if Honeywell was producing flour and Nigeria flour being producing flour, then there will be very healthy competition within the two major producers. We are seeing that happening in cement in, in the cement now. Mia Dangote seems to be the only serious, the number one um, uh, cement producer in Nigeria. And when Dangote coughs, every other person catches cold. What it means is that Dangotis can, at any given point in time, increase the, the prices of cement, and that it goes like that. Boa, BUA, at a point was doing well, but I don't know what happened. They don't seem to compete very well. And there are also many other uh, smaller uh, uh, companies that were also into cement uh, production, but that, uh, the price of cement is almost as, as much as 5,000 miles. The good one, as I said, for uh, Nigeria, uh, means acquiring Honeywell, but uh, I think we should also take the caution so that we don't come to find a big elephant in the room and then uh, we cannot be able to do anything with issue of prices. But good one, it's, it's good that um, Nigeria, Nigeria flower mills have been on this for over 40, 50 years and they've been doing very well in the area of flower. So acquiring honey, honey well is a good one for me. Probably the high, honey well might be having issues. You don't know, but it's a good one. But I hope that will not in itself affect the prices of flower as it were. Where we just have one single uh, pig or company determine uh, the prices of um, that uh, product, which we use for our bread anyway. Everybody is bread in Nigeria and yeah. cake and the rest of it. I know my sister loves cake very well. So. Yes, she does. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you so much, uh, Chris Wandu. Uh, we do appreciate your time with us this morning. And we look forward to uh, more of uh, the conversation with you uh, as we actually proceed. All right, uh, so thank we step on the brakes right Have now. Nice thank day. you so much. Thank Have you a nice so day, much. you too. Um, so we take a short break now. When we uh, return, I will bring you what happened today in history. Please stick around.